I can name by name are TAs, Tyson and Monica, who acted as students as needed and as uh, authoritarian figures as usual. <clears throat> I'm Steve Montgomery. Uh, Liliana Vasera, not here. She's caught uh, behind a volcano plume in Milan uh, and wasn't able to get here today quite. We've been working with a social anthropologist, Luz Marie de Gavi, who has kept us honest. Uh, she's Guatemalan. And in fact, she is at her place watching, as we hope, uh, uh, at Lake Atitlan. So that's our domestic team. Uh, and Mariana's presence is here in this project. Our international team. Uh, is, includes Landivar, the Landivar crew, and here you can see Tango, Mariana, Denise, Loyana. So, everybody's been here. Uh, so, Guatemala, all signs are pointing toward research in Guatemala. And we uh, sought an NGO on the ground there uh, in the name of Atit Hala, uh, who loosely connected us with. Uh, they are in the village of San Juan, La Laguna, which so happens is on the Tetelan. Uh, and about Lake Atitlan, if you Google it, you get the most beautiful lake in the world. It'll be your first hit. Um, yet few of us, especially the gringos, had never heard of it. Hmm. Born long ago when a volcano collapsed in the Guatemalan highlands, and it's mysteriously deep and surrounded by three volcanoes. We see it here from a NASA satellite photo, beautiful swirling patterns of cyanobacteria, algae. Uh, that's not good. Uh, in other words, I'm really stinky and healthy. It, it blooms in the lake periodically. That's been happening more lately. This kind of bloom is not a good thing. Uh, yeah, same Lake Atitlan that uh, these guys were swimming in. Uh, so uh, we, in terms of how we conducted our research, spent couple weeks here in the classroom getting smart. This is all in this 14 week period. And we want to see for ourselves how we might help. Uh, we joined the 12 of our students and spent an amazing week immersed in culture, the culture, the economy, the ecology of the region. We met with uh, Atitlan Executive Director Monica Berger, who is on the phone, and her team, who were also on the phone, uh, she presented the situation, which is that the lake's ecological balance seems to have been tipped by a combination of fertilizer runoff, volcanic soil runoff, human waste, and climate change. So depending on who you ask, most of those are man-made, maybe man-caused, maybe all of them. Well, the volcanic soil runoff is going to do too much though. So that's the situation. And uh, she uh, pointed out that when the lake has bloomed previously, and it's easy to ignore the problem until it starts to hurt tourism and the lake's image. So we came to understand there are four types of stakeholders depending on the lake's health. And uh, I'm slightly out of order here, but the problem has become acute. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit more about that, which is that Monica, uh, Monica's team is working on ways to clean up the lake by creating a community development group that could agree on perhaps a certification system uh, of the local businesses. The idea being that tourism, which is the industry, would rather do business in a place that's certified. So enter our international squad. Monica arranged for us four days of activities around the lake with the of our students, TAs, and teachers. Uh, we met each day and shared observations, ideas, uh, stayed at an amazing place via Samaya, and met in the yoga room. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, here it is, the lake. Uh, so, about these stakeholders, uh, we identified four groups, uh, one being the Maya, who are indigenous, as you know. Uh, they are made up of artisans, and among others. Uh, they're born monetarily and rich <coughs> culturally. Um, and we are now looking at the second group, which are tourists made up of national and international, and who have come for lakes, beauty, and culture. There's a private sector, 
uh, business owners, depending on tourism, and the expats, uh, who are made up of, as far as we can tell, mainly Yanks and Euros, who are property owners, but from our point of view, a fairly enlightened bunch, and kind of did, you know, they were a walled, gated community, McMansion crews, as, as far as we can see. And those groups are collected, connected to the lake culturally, economically, and ecologically. If you uh, circle them, each of them uh, is dependent on the lake's health. Uh, and if that weren't enough, the other stakeholders that were bringing in this picture, the people that are involved in this are the NGOs, a couple of NGOs. Uh, Art Center, we need you to be impressive, Art Center. Vladivar and the group of people that issued us the grant, NCIIA. So this looks like a Venn <coughs> diagram waiting to happen. <coughs> Kind of, um, and we're going to see if we can get these groups to intersect. Uh, so, but we don't need to draw characters. Uh, in fact, the cool thing about field research is at Art Center, as you know, we draw persona, we draw scenario, and we invent things that happen. But stuff really happens there. So, the cool thing about field research is that you get to identify and meet these people. And here's proof. Okay, there's an NGO, there's an expat in the background there, uh, there's a student. There's the mayor. This is all in one spot. I just happened to get this clip. This is actually the, the mayor of Santa Cruz. Uh, he was about to give a speech opening the new tienda. Uh, there are Maya. Yeah, these look like they are either cats or tourists or both. And also featured in this video is sewage runoff from the town on the hill coming down under the bridge, out into the lake. Oh, good video. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Presentation's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yeah. and, 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 and by some people's argument, the identification of the problem is the, you know, is, is the piece. But we will go further than that, so we've identified. Uh, the only thing not shown in there were the, were the hotel uh, owners, and you will uh, you'll see them see them shortly. So, uh, so as we've seen, uh, uh, Monica and others feel we need a community development group that's pushing for a government cleanup of the lake, and we're not sure we can get the government to do that. So we're taking that into our hands to restore the lake, and <coughs> Monica envisions, and we like this idea too. Of an, a certification system, as I said, for the hotels and restaurants to meet environmental standards. So, can these groups work together to save the lake? We're pleased to present Atitlan Azul, an initiative inspired by Monica and Atitala to engage and mobilize the whole lake Atitlan community by co-creating principles programs and products for sustainable life using the acute pollution problem as catalyst. It would have been nice going into this project to have a well-defined statement. The statement was created week 13. <laughs> week ago. So, uh, yeah, nevertheless, uh, and Atitlan Azul, this uh, initiative calls for co-creating new principles and programs for the stakeholders. So, uh, these, uh, the initiative includes these elements, and I want you to think about these because we are going to be using them to review people's work, uh, that there are elements of cultural, commercial, and environmental principles, and uh, we'd now I'd like to show you some of the programs that we developed <coughs> uh, included in the Atitlan Azul initiative. And we'd like from you, audience members, uh, your recommendations on which programs that you're going to see uh, have potential with regard to cultural, commercial, and environmental aspects. So I'm going to turn it 